Americans for Prosperity. You know, who's against that? <laughs> or Committee for Truth in Politics. Or Americans for Apple Pie. <laughs> Moms for Motherhood. I, I made those last two up. <laughs> sarcastic President Obama on the campaign trail in Connecticut and he got some laughs but perhaps showing a little bit of a frustration there he's up there campaigning for a candidate in a tough race yeah and they're taking on some of the conservative groups that are really gunning for Democrats right now with a lot of money top line starts right now Welcome to ABC News Top Line. I'm Karen Travers in Washington. And I'm Jonathan Carl in New York. Every day we bring you the latest in politics, news, pop culture, sports, a little bit of a friendly rivalry between some sports teams as well. And John, get us started with our first Top Line. Connecticut Smackdown. The president was in Connecticut last night campaigning for, of all people, Richard Blumenthal. This is a guy that is the most popular Democratic politician in the state of <laughs> Connecticut, a state that is dominated by Democrats, and yet Charlie Cook just yesterday moved the race against Linda McMahon, a wrestling professional wrestling executive, to toss up. This is really bad news for Democrats at this point, Karen. And, and the latest poll showed that 52% of people in Connecticut disapprove of the way the president is handling his job as president, Amazing. and that is raising questions of whether or not he is a drag on Richard Blumenthal up there in Connecticut. Can you imagine? <laughs> Absolutely. Decision day. Lisa Murkowski, the senator from Alaska, will be deciding today and announcing what she will do, whether or not she will put herself as a write-in candidate for that Republican, uh, for the Senate race up in Alaska. Remember, she lost that Republican primary to Tea Party candidate Joe Miller last month. She has a lot of money. She says she's getting a lot of encouragement from Alaskans to put herself in this race and run, but that is not what people in Washington are telling her, John. Yeah, she sure sounds like she's leaning towards a run. We'll see if she really reality hits and she says yes or no. But I'll tell you, the Republicans here in Washington, and boy, they've been good at this stuff so far, haven't they, Karen? Uh, <laughs> they, they, they are sending a very clear signal to Lisa Murkowski that if she runs, they are running against her, not with her this time. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, maybe she'll do better. When they supported her last time, it didn't work out so well. There you go. <laughs> Next up, trouble brewing in Ohio. This is a shocker. We have a Quinnipiac poll out that shows the Republicans way out in front against the Democrats in both the governor's race and the Senate race. Take a look at the numbers if we have it. Uh, Rob Portman is actually up 20 points over Lee Fisher, the Democrat. That's in the Senate race. Now look at the governor's race. John Kasich, former congressman, up 17 points over the incumbent governor, Ted Strickland. Also a guy that had been considered a pretty popular figure, but perhaps not anymore in Ohio. Karen, you know how important Ohio is. If those two races are anywhere near as wide apart as that poll suggests, Democrats are in real trouble in terms of the House races in Ohio and also looking forward after and, the election. And John, that is all about jobs, jobs, jobs in the economy. And as you said, that is a very critical battleground state. And one thing that is interesting, September 28th, early voting starts in Ohio. So even if there are any signs that the economy is improving in the month of October, it might be too late for Strickland and Fisher. Now here in Washington today, O'Donnell's debut in D.C. Christine O'Donnell, who won that Republican primary in Delaware on Tuesday, is down here in Washington today speaking at the Values Voter Summit. This is that annual cattle call of potential Republican candidates. You have, you name it, they're down here this weekend speaking. And Christine O'Donnell will be speaking this afternoon. John, she has been in the national spotlight now for four days. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, you know, uh, the other thing interesting about this is that she is somebody who is going to be meeting today with John Cornyn, the head of the National uh, Senatorial Committee for Republicans. So, uh, you know, she is now going to be face to face with the establishment that tried to do her in, and she may get a few more days in the national spotlight. By the way, Karen, I think it's important now to note that we did not do a top line on Sarah Palin going to Iowa. Uh, that shows what we can do on this show when Rick Klein's not around. The power so, of uh, the people here. Yeah, Rick it's, is not it's here. good. Uh, we're we're, we're going to turn now to a fascinating uh, discussion with. Steve Hildebrand. As viewers of Top Line know, Hildebrand is one of the most skilled Democratic strategists in the nation. Some people say that he is the reason why Barack Obama is elected president. He directed his campaign in Iowa, deputy campaign manager during the general. He is sitting this out while Democrats are struggling. He is not engaged in a single race this cycle. I went out to South Dakota to his home to ask him why. All right, we're here with Steve Hildebrand, one of the top Democratic strategists in the country here on your home turf in South Dakota. Good to be Sioux here. Sioux Falls. Good to have you here. Good to be here. So, Steve, how bad is it going to be for Democrats, these midterms? 
Well, it's, you know, we're still uh, 60 days out or so. Um, it could be pretty bad. Um, I don't think it has to be uh, bad. I think if our Democratic candidates would actually uh, be proud to stand for their votes that they've taken, uh, not all of them, but some. I mean, people who uh, have supported health care shouldn't run from it. They should be as proud of that vote as any vote they've ever taken in their lives because it's actually going to help people in a pretty serious way. It's not going to hurt people. And is that what you see people doing, though, because they're, they're, they're afraid this vote's going to be used against them? In fact, it's already being used against them by Republicans. They're running away from it, running away from the president. Yeah, and, and they're, they're, you know, the, the fact that they're cowards... In, in such a serious way, I mean, is this about their reelection or is it about helping people? What are they in politics for? What are they in government for? If they're not in government to help people, they should simply get out. They shouldn't run for reelection. And we should put people in there who are strong leaders who want to do something to help people. That health care bill is going to help young people, old people, poor people, middle income people. Uh, it's, it's vitally important to this country, and any one of them that walks away from it and isn't proud of that vote is a coward. If the current trajectory remains the way it is for the next two months, and the kind of Democratic strategy remains the way it is, do the Democrats lose the House? The Democratic strategy as it sits right now is to run from the president, run from important proposals that help this country. If we're not going to do something about health care, if we're not going to do something about climate change, if we're not going to do something about the economy, about the deficit, about the war, you know, Washington is going to get punished. The, the Democrats might get punished more because they're in power, mm -hmm. but Washington in general is going to get punished. And, and you've seen it in Republican primaries across the country. You've seen it in Democratic primaries across the country. And you're going to see it with a lot of just pure incumbents from both parties in, in November. They're getting punished because they're not dealing with the issues. They're not dealing with the real problems that we face as a country. And they should be punished. Mm -hmm. Stand up and lead or get out of the way. So, and you so might be replaced with someone worse, but you know that's the options that are sometimes given to people. So do, on the current trajectory, do the Democrats lose the House? I think Democrats can hold the House, hold the Senate. Are they going to do that? I don't know. If they start standing up for principle and start campaigning in a way that makes voters proud, they'll mm -hmm. probably win. And if they don't, if they continue the strategy of If they run it, scared, yeah. like they've been doing, they're gonna lose. Even in those states, even in those districts, right, and there are 48 of them that, uh, you know, dem held by Democrats that were won by McCain. This is where the strategy is, you know, you've, we're, 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 we're in states where the president, in, in districts where the president is not popular where the polling suggests many of them, health care bill is unpopular. Even there, you think that what they need to do is embrace it all. There's a difference between embracing it all and saying that we have to face our problems. Mm -hmm. the, you know, you, you, people can say what they want about President Obama, but he's facing the problems. He's taking on the problems. He could use a Congress that would help him with it, and maybe we could get something done more aggressively. Um, but he's he's dealing with the problems. And so, wh where is this coming from? Where is this you know run against the president, run against? And we're seeing a lot of ads. I mean, we're already seeing. We're, we're just getting into the into the fall campaign. We're already seeing you know ads by Democrats touting their ability to stand up to the to their own party, to the president. It's politics, you know. It's it's. Uh, but you're saying it's not smart politics. I think it's stupid politics. You know, those same people embraced. Obama in, in 2008. And Obama is no different now than he was then. He's, he's, he's siding with the same issues that he campaigned on. Don't run from them. It's in a year like this where the, where the Democrats are in danger of losing the House, by maybe even the Senate. You know, you, th you think you'd, they could use a guy like you out there. <laughs> no, <laughs> no one's uh, knocking the door down to, to try and get me to help. So I'm, I'm pretty set on the fact that I'm not going to go help people who don't deserve the help they need, you know, at a time when they're not standing up strong as Democrats. I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to encourage other people to do it either. 
Wow, Steve Hildebrand, former deputy campaign manager for President Barack Obama, or at that point candidate Barack Obama. That's quite a statement. She's, he's saying that he doesn't believe that a lot of these Democrats running basically deserve to win the way they're running. And calling uh, them cowards, too, yeah, twice. I mean, it's really something else. Mm -hmm. uh, now we're going to take a, a move in a very different direction, Karen. I know you've been following this story very closely. <laughs> uh, John Stewart and Stephen Colbert preparing for joint rallies on October 30th in Washington. Here's how they're playing it now. For tonight, I announce the rally to restore sanity. We will gather on the National Mall in Washington, D.C. John Stewart is holding a rally in Washington, D.C. to promote reasonableness? Need I point out that reason is just one letter away from treason? My fellow Americans, two score and four days from now, on October 30th, 2010, I am calling for the nation to join me on the Washington Mall for the march to keep fear alive. <laughs> this is going to be quite a day down here in Washington. And John, they announced this on a comedy show, but they're deadly serious. John Stewart has oh, this been is be big. Really, this is going to be big. Yes, he has been going after Glenn Beck for weeks about this. So this is his response. It's going to be quite a fascinating day in Washington.